Hi and welcome to Extronical. In this episode we're going to hook up this colour LCD to a ESP32. Let's start. <laughs> Okay, so we've already seen this run at the beginning. It's going round. Um, if I just reset it, uh, it does some text and goes through various sort of graphical demos, and then it'll switch it and rotate it 90 degrees and do it that way. So we want to know how we can connect up this to an ESP32. Um, I'll just unplug it for a second. The screen you're looking at getting should hopefully be one like this. It needs to be an SBI display and it needs to be um, 7735 chip on board that's doing the actual control of the LCD because uh, we're going to use a 773 driver software to drive it so you can see this is what it looks like oops it's pretty the right way up uh, it's going to be one of those days um, so it's the right way up this way and then the wrong way up that way so you can see it's, that's how it's labelled like that um, turn it this way and you've got 5 volts, you've got supply, this runs off 3.3 volts, fine. And the fact that it's got a, like a 3.3 volt connection there. I did a previous video on this when I was connecting this up to an ESP8266. Um, I wired all this up, soldered it all up, and it just does not drive the display if you connect up on this side. You connect everything up on this side, including 3.3 volts to this connection, and it works fine. So I'm thinking they're not actually got any sort of sensible connection to the actual chip or anything. Um, so uh, you've got VCC. Uh, ground, uh, the LED to brighten up the screen and the various uh, connections for the SPI. So we'll turn that back over, which way was it that way? And put it back so that VCC is going to be there. Let's click that in. Ouch, there we go. And we've got an ESP32. Uh, uh, I've showed this one before. I'll put a card up in the screen somewhere around about here. Uh, with a link to linking that up, uh, how you set that up with your Arduino software RDE. And I should point out actually that this is uh, a Node MCU 32S, that's what I've bought here. Uh, if you buy the same, you think it should probably be exactly the same. Um, I'm not quite, quite sure. This one comes with no silk screen on the top, which makes it really hard work connecting things up. But anyway, let's go through the connections. So we've got the 3.3 um, volts off the microcontroller going into the red and the ground off the mag controller going into the blue and that's been mirrored all around the board so we've got, let's just move the board a little bit more into display so we've got um, all around the board, all the reds are 3.3 volts, all the blues are grounds so we've got the display connected up, the VCC to the 3.3 volts and the ground to the ground we've then got the LED for the display connected to not the 3.3 volts, you can do but it'll be a bit dimmer. I connect it straight up to this pin, which on this board is 5 volts. This is a 5 volts from the USB on this board, which gives it a bit of extra brightness and it's fine. Don't need a resistor in, just connect it straight to it. And then the next one uh, going along is the yellow one. And that is connected to GPIO. Let's just check and get this right. 19. Is that? No. 18. So this is connected to GPIO 18 and basically this is the clock for the display for the SBI connection. So this is SBI clock going to the hardware SBI clock of this which is GPIO 18. Uh, the next one is uh, the data line. I think it's SDA on this display it's labelled as and it goes to the hardware uh, MOSI connection which is SBIO GPIO 23 on this chip and you can see it's physically it's the second pin down. The next one is the green which goes right down here to GPIO 2 and that's a register select so you can select either to send data to the display or to um, select a particular register which it, we don't need to get involved with it so it, that's how it's, it knows what to do with the display but it's a register select and it needs to connect to GPIO uh, 2 on here the next one is the grey one which is GPIO 4 and that is reset screen 
So this resets the screen back to its initial state. Uh, you could connect this to the reset uh, pin of this one, but I've kept it to GPIO um, 4, uh, but you could connect it to the reset pin. The next one is the purple, which is GPIO, he's just looking 5. So the purple is going from uh, is GPIO 5, and that is chip select. So this is our chip select, or on this one it's called uh, for SPI slave select. So this enables that screen to accept data on the SPI bus and this makes sure that only this chip, by setting this low, only this will actually get that data. Uh, irrelevant for this, because we've only got one display and one um, controlling chip. If you wanted to, that could be permanently held low and then it would only talk to this device. If you had more than one SPI device, you would have to then use that. But for now it's connected up to the hardware um, chip select register, which is, as I said, GPIO. Uh, five and then that is it isn't it that is all the connections so we've got all the connections in and you can see the display is working so we'll just go on to the software side now and we'll look how we actually install what we need to do to get that working okay as well if you want to f follow a more textual version if you go to extronical.com uh, basics displays cross to this uh, TFT color and you can see how we can, we've got an article on Arduino connections, ESP826 connections, and then this one, the ESP32. If you click in there, you'll get the actual written up article that I've already done on how to connect this up. So you can see we've got the actual display that we've used. And we'll come back to this to actually show you where you can need to download stuff from as well. Uh, let's just launch our Arduino software. It's already going. So let's just move that over to here. So what I'm going to do, and I've actually cleared out the driver, uh, the driver for this uh, and any libraries that were required from the Arduino software. So what we'll do is we'll just upload this to the board and then it clears out the display that we're already running. So we can see when we've actually got it all installed correctly. So, first thing you need to do is to actually get the driver for, the, for this chip, which means go into the external website, go into the article that we've just shown you, and scrolling down until you get to where the driver is. There we go. So, Extronical ST7735 library. This is based on the Adafruit library of that name. There were some issues with these cheaper color LCD displays, which I had right back when I did the Arduino connection to this. So I rewrote the S7735 library. Uh, I tweaked again for the A266 and I've tweaked again for the ESP32. So download this one. And also, if you've not already got it, you might have been following other tutorials. If you haven't, you need the Adafruit graphics library, which I've already got. I won't re-download, but you download that as well. That's a direct link, I think, to the GitHub site. And you can download it. For now, let's go back to our software. So now you need to add that library. So add... Um, include library, add a zip library. And I just realised I wasn't recording the screen for a few seconds there as well. So yeah, the screen is blank set on, on the actual display. Um, so yeah, go to a zip library, go to your downloads folder, open that up, select that, it should import it. Library's been added, you can see down there. And then you want the, so presume you've got the Adafruit library, graphics library installed. If you haven't, you'd need to download it, like I said, and then you'd be going to add in that including that library again as an add zip library, so you do that again. So once you've made sure you've got those two requisite fi files, you're good to go. So file, examples, and we come down towards the bottom, and you'll see it's Extronical ST7735 library. And you've got various ones. The graphics test is for the Arduino, uh, obviously the 8266, and the SP32 there. You can go the screen buffer test um, for now. They are, if you're looking at the uh, Frogger series of articles, in fact, I've put a card just up in the corner now. And that's going to talk about how, what Screen Buffer is and why we do, you need it, particularly for games. So, select the graphics test for the ESP32. And let's close down the other one. And this will have, if you scroll down, all the correct connections here for what we've just done and wired this up. So, let's upload that to the board and we should see the demo come back to life. Okay and we're uploading and we should see the demo come on soon, hard resetting and there we go so we're all off and good. 
Okay, so that's the end of this tutorial. Um, like, subscribe and share. And have a look on extronical.com. Have a browse around. There's lots of other projects on there. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.